Hi, welcome back to Waxing On. Monday, that means jazz. Now, a couple weeks ago, I talked about my first Boss Brass album, and I kind of hinted they had something that was a little more unique coming. And I found one of the recordings here this week. It's uh, called Big Band Jazz, and it's a direct to disc recording. Now, you don't hear much about that anymore. This was late 70s, and this was a uh, new technology was coming out. Two album set. But very different from regular recording. Uh, usually you go in the recording studio, you lay down your master tracks, you can go in multi-track recording, so you're doing some overdubs, you're adding some other parts, you're you know, fixing some things that maybe didn't go right. That's great. I mean, I always appreciated that anytime I have done any kind of recording to have that multi-track option to be able to go in and kind of punch in a little repair if I need to, or maybe add another instrument or something. This one is uh, stereophonic direct to disc recording. No tapes involved, no chance for a remix, no chance to punch in new stuff, no chance to do overdubs. That's it. Straight from the microphones, it's going on to disc. I'll just read you a little bit about it here because it was quite a new technology. This was in the late 70s. Not using tapes, the recording process prevents the use of a computer uh, built into the cutting lathe and forces the disc cutting engineer to make many delicate adjustments to the lathe during the recording. So a lot of pressure on the engineer here. To say the least, it requires great skill and experience. Artists have similar difficult time as much as their performance must continue for the full side of the album, right? No stops in between, no breaks, except for four or five seconds between tunes. So when they start recording, they're recording a whole side of an album at one time just a few seconds in between. This is very unlike anything that would happen in the recording studio, unlike anything that would happen in a live performance. I mean, live performance, yes, you've got breaks in between, you've got chit-chat, you've got all this going on before you start the next tune. Here we're looking at a clear slate right from beginning the needle drops to the end, they're playing. They've got that little break in between tunes, but that's about it. So there's a lot of pressure on the performers. Plus the fact, if you screw something up, and that last few minutes of the thing, that whole side's wasted. It's got to be perfect from the beginning right to the end. Can you imagine the pressure of doing that? Yeah, that's really un unusual. The recording engineer must record live off the floor with no second chances to balance instruments or vocalists, as would be the case with tape recording. So you can't go back and adjust anything. It's as you hear it. I mean, you can't get more live than this. Uh, something else just to notice is some technical information. It's pressed using a special low-noise, uh, low-wearing vinyl. It was made, uh, let me see here, we had a couple unusual features here. Uh, the, the master lacquer was cut using one of the new and as yet rare diamond cutting styli that was being manufactured in Japan. The master lacquer blanks used exclusively by Umbrella. Umbrella is the label this is on. Uh, for direct-to-disc recordings are manufactured in France by Prial. Uh, the result is a combination of diamond cutting stylus and the pyro lacquered blank, an appreciable increase in the quietness of the groove, and as well, better all around balance and frequencies within the grooves. Now, how impressive is this? Here's another warning they say. Um, the frequency response is so wide and is such high energy that we recommend you make sure your tone controls are centered to the loudness control off. No equalization is used, and at least for the first listening, you don't do anything to try and boost that signal. It's that, that clear, that sharp, that powerful. Uh, they made two albums direct to disc. I'll talk about the other one later. You can see the list of performers we've got on here. There's quite a crew of players. A lot that are very similar to what were on the original Boss Brass we talked about. I'll just give you a quick rundown of who's playing in the band. Rhythm section, we've got Greek guitarist Ed Bickert from Toronto. Don Thompson, Jimmy Dale, musical director on a number of shows, uh, keyboard player, Terry Clark on drums. Saxophones, of course, the great Mo Kaufman, Jerry Toth, Eugene Amaro, Rick Wilkins, Gary Morgan. I think we had everybody but maybe Gary on that first album. He's incorporated two French horn players in here. We got Brad Warner and Bruce Stimson. Trombones, an all-star trombone section. Ron Hughes, Dave Murdo, Bob Livingston, and Ian McDougall. There's a lot of very familiar names if you're a, a trombone player. And again, 
great, great trumpet section. Sam Noto, Bruce Cassidy, Guido Basso, Eric Trogott, and Arnie Tchaikovsky playing lead again. Uh, three, oh no, sorry, Juno Award winner, 1978. Now, Juno Awards are very similar to the Grammys. It's our Canadian version. So yes, it won for that. Um, four sides. We've got uh, Just Friends, Keep Me In Your Heart, The Runaway Hormones, a Rob McConnell feature, uh, Street of Dreams by Victor Young, Sam Lewis, Dirty Man by Bob Brookmeyer, Tribute to Art Fern by uh, Rob McConnell. You might remember that character as one Johnny Carson used to uh, portray once in a while. We got a Neil Hefty tune called Fred, Jimmy Dale doing a song called Good Morning Irene, No More Blues by Antonio Carlos Jobim, and uh, Porky and Best Sweet takes up all the side four. A lot of great tunes on here. One excellent, excellent band out of Toronto. Uh, album was recorded in Toronto, of course. And, I mean, you'd have to hear it to really believe it. And it's really a technology that was coming along. Final was still in at the time. We had a little bit of quadraphonic where they tried to add four speakers instead of two. This was just a different option. Stereo, direct to disc, everybody had to be on the top of their game, and it's just an excellent album. If you get a chance to listen to it, you'll see what I mean, but you're not going to appreciate it unless you have it on vinyl. I mean, you're not gonna get the direct to disc um, experience streaming, and I'm afraid that's the problem. I don't know if there's many of these available. You might find some in a, again, discount bin. You might find some in someone's yard sale or a thrift shop. If you do, it's worth checking out just for the unique technology we have as well as one great big band. Okay, our look at Direct to Disc, this time featuring Rob McConnell and the Boss Brass, and it's called Big Band Jazz. Thanks for stopping by today. Everybody take care. Stay safe. We'll see you on Wednesday when it's classic rock. Till then, thanks for stopping by.